Colon cancer is now the number one cancer killer in young men under the age of 50, and it's number two for women. And one thing that can lower your risk of colon cancer is fiber. There's actually studies showing that individuals in rural populations, so around farm and land and fresh produce, are eating anywhere from 50 to 120 grams of fiber per day, and they have lower risks of colon cancer. Now, fiber became very popular, I feel like, in 2024, and as a gut health dietitian, that makes me really happy. I've been very passionate about helping people who have IBS or inflammatory bowel disease or other GI issues find the root cause of their GI issues so they can feel better. And one of the big things that we've been working on that I've learned to be you know, not as easy as just getting enough protein in is fiber. Bare minimum recommendations for both men and women, I would say is around 30 grams of fiber. There's five main categories, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts and seeds, beans and legumes. And I feel like 50 grams of fiber sounds like a lot. I don't know why it wouldn't when Americans are eating closer to 15 grams of fiber per day. So people are talking about how people need more fiber and how fiber can lower your risk of colon cancer, but that scares people. So, you know, people like to be efficient and they're gonna go to the store, they're gonna get some mission tortillas or they're gonna get some other type of food that has a lot of added fiber in it or they're gonna get a bunch of fiber supplements, which is fine, but if you're only eating like 15 grams of fiber per day and then you bump your way up to 50, you're going to have a lot of GI upset. You actually could end up constipated, you could end up having diarrhea, you could end up really bloated, gassy, just uncomfortable. And that makes people think fiber's the problem when people just aren't educated on how to increase their fiber properly. That's why I like to educate on it because knowledge is power and not a lot of people know this about fiber. So here are my three biggest tips to consider when increasing your fiber. Number one, track what you're getting for a few days. Just get a good estimate and then try to increase that by about five grams every few days. So the first tip is go slow and steady. Tip number two is to make sure you hydrate. For every five grams of fiber you're increasing, try to get at least eight ounces of extra water so the fiber has somewhere to go. And the last tip is to make sure you're getting fiber variety. I have a lot of videos on the different types of fiber. All you really need to focus on is getting fiber from all those five groups that I mentioned. You've heard of insoluble, insoluble fiber. All whole food sources are gonna have all of those. And that's why really just trying to get different sources from all those five categories is the easiest way to get variety. The reason variety is important is because all the different types of insoluble, insoluble fiber that are within all those foods have different roles. There's three main things fiber can do. It can help form a solid stool, it can help push stool out, and it can also feed the good gut bacteria in our gut. When our gut bacteria eat fiber sources, it creates something called butyrate, which is a short chain fatty acid. That's typically coming from prebiotic fiber rich foods. So like onion, garlic, artichoke, asparagus, banana, resistant starch. So when you cook pasta, you cook rice, you cook potatoes, and then you cool it rapidly, it creates resistant starch, which also is fermentable. Basically the process of our gut bacteria eating the fiber is called fermentation. And that creates gas and short chain fatty acids, including butyrate. Butyrate is essentially a little army on the outside of your colon that are preventing bad things from getting in and helping populate the good gut bacteria you have. So it's gonna help with your overall inflammation and your immune system. And there's a very interesting article I found from UPMC, which is so awesome, because I used to work in GI there, big hospital system in Pittsburgh. And there was actually a study where they compared two groups. They had one group lower their fiber intake to 12 grams of fiber per day, and the other group had to increase their fiber intake to 55 grams of fiber per day. This was over two weeks. They did a colonoscopy before and after. A colonoscopy is basically just a camera going into your colon, so it's looking at the lining of your gut. And they found that the people that lowered their fiber to 12 grams of fiber per day had increased inflammation and also a proliferation of their cells, meaning you could see their cells start to multiply, which is something you don't wanna see. And that's not to say you can get cancer in two weeks, that's just saying your gut lining changes that rapidly, and when cells start to multiply, apply over time that can increase risks for cancer. The group that increased their fiber intake to 55 grams of fiber per day had lower rates of inflammation and also higher butyrate levels. So they had that little army protecting their colon. So fiber is important. I know a lot of us are not getting even 30 grams of fiber. So work your way slowly and steadily. People wanted some examples of how to get 50 grams of fiber per day. Okay, we don't really need to jump there yet, but here's my breakfast, for example. I had a piece of carbonate toast. They have a couple different kinds. It is a more expensive bread. Gluten-free one is just 
one of the best gluten-free breads I've had. There's this one, it's 80 calories, seven grams of fiber, and seven grams of protein. The gluten-free one, it's like a nice seedy white bread, is 60 calories per slice, 14 grams of fiber, and one gram of protein. Any whole wheat bread is gonna have around four grams of fiber and a little bit of protein. So that's just a way that you can kind of look at things. But I basically use this tracking app called Chronometer just to give you guys some examples. And then before I get into things, we can look in this pantry. So remember the five categories as I mentioned. These are the categories that have fiber sources. Whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, beans, legumes. Potatoes can go in like whole grain veggie sections. So you always want to think of adding those types of food sources to your meal. Hemp parts, three grams of fiber per three tablespoons. Chia seeds, per two tablespoons, you're gonna get 10 grams of fiber. I love having nuts and seeds, like these are macadamia nuts. If you do a serving of this, you'll get two grams of fiber. Every little bit counts, so just add things up. Aloha bars are one of my favorite. I'll give you an example of how to get 50 grams of fiber without any supplements or additives, but it's totally fine because I like to rotate these types of foods too and I don't do them every day. Aloha bars have 14 grams of protein and 10 grams of fiber. And then I also really like Kaizen. So they have a mac and cheese, so that is going to be giving you 24 grams of protein and 15 grams of fiber per serving. And their pasta gives you, it's really good, it's 15 grams of fiber, 20 grams of protein per serving. They also have a rice. So it's really helpful to also include things like that. Even like Triscuits, you get three grams of fiber per six crackers. Now, my breakfast the past two days has been a slice of that carbonat bread. I air fried two hard boiled eggs, which pro tip, literally opened a carton of eggs, put all of them in the air fryer, 300 degrees, 10 minutes. So I had two eggs and then I made a little arugula salad with tomatoes, mixed all that, put it on top of the bread. And then I had a half of a sumo orange on the side. Oranges are a really good fiber source. I have a whole fiber guide where I have a list of different fiber sources, but some are higher than others. I have a few videos on that that I'll also link. That breakfast was 545 calories, 30 grams of protein and 14 grams of fiber. And here are where the fiber sources are coming from for that breakfast. Lunch can go a couple different ways. You wanna think of those five categories. I would make any dense bean salad. They're like going viral on TikTok. I just Googled a bunch of them. You could just pick any of those. But I would think of things that are really high in fiber. So artichokes are a vegetable that have the highest amount of fiber in them. Edamame is a bean. It's really high in fiber and protein. So I added corn, black beans, artichoke hearts, edamame, red bell pepper, feta, and some sunflower seeds. You can also do pumpkin seeds. Three ounce chicken breast on the side. And if you want to get crazy, this is what I would do. I would just have either like baby potatoes or just a sweet potato on the side. Potatoes are so high in fiber. So this lunch was 674 calories, 50 grams of protein, and 19 grams of fiber. Dinner time, I just did a little side salad, mixed greens, let's add some pumpkin seeds. Those are a good source of plant-based protein plus fiber. I love apples and dates in a salad. So like half a medium apple, fiber, one medjool date, fiber. Mix that together and then have some salmon or chicken or any type of protein on the side. Maybe a whole wheat pasta, a lentil pasta. Lentils are super high in fiber, so I added a lentil pasta. Dinner is around 492 calories, 39 grams of protein, and eight grams of fiber. And then if we add a little snack, I love dried edamame. These only bean little snack packs are amazing. 100 calories, 11 grams of protein, four grams of fiber. Crazy. Cactus sticks are also a thing, super high in fiber. Dried chickpeas high in fiber. You could even do hummus. But I just did some multi-green crackers. You can do the Triscuits, the only bean, little snack pack, and then some broccoli and carrots. Broccoli are really high in fiber, same with Brussels sprouts. But yeah, carrots are also a good fiber source. So that little snack is giving you around 270 calories, 16 grams of protein, nine grams of fiber. The daily total is going to be just under 2000 calories, 136 grams of protein, and exactly 50 grams of fiber. I was happy about that. There's so many options. And my advice to you is to just start thinking about, okay, at every single meal you have, do you have a fiber source coming from whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, or beans? You don't have to do it every single time, but I would start thinking like that and getting at least three out of the five categories in there. I also do a little plant challenge with my friends and my patients and all of you. In your notes app, just start writing down every single plant source you're eating, so it'll be any of these, and try to get to 50 plants a week. That'll help you naturally increase your fiber without tracking it, but again, I would probably track it just to help yourself start to learn the fiber sources a little better. I do not have all the fiber sources memorized, but I know which foods are higher in fiber, and that's what helps me. Beans. They're perfect. Yeah, it just takes practice. Tracking can help some people. It's not amazing for others. So just do what works for you. And yeah, I thought the study was so interesting and I wanted to share it. And yeah, I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe and share with all your friends, family, and let's get more people to 50 grams of fiber. I'm proud of you though for working on getting to 30. Oh, I'm also going to be starting a community. And for the first 100 people that sign up, they're gonna be grandfathered into a rate. 
I'm thinking $19.99 a month. It's going to include a lot of my educations, a lot of my handouts. I'm thinking it's going to be mostly about fiber just to kick it off, but I also have some protein categories that I'll release, omega-3 fats categories, and a whole nutrition course where you learn about all the macronutrients, how to calculate your needs. It's really, really helpful. So I'm also going to have weekly or monthly Q&As where we can hop on a call live and you can ask me whatever questions you want. We can all hang out. You can get as personal as you want. So if you want me to calculate your calorie needs or your protein needs, I can roughly do it. And I'm thinking about adding a new resource every week. Also trying to give you guys some meal plan ideas. So I already have one up there that's giving you 50 grams of fiber and 150 to 200 grams of protein. Ton of meal ideas, ton of meal plans. And yeah, I just want to get it going. And then I'm going to keep adding to it so the price is going to increase. So my plan is to get 100 of you in there locked in so we can really start working on getting enough fiber, getting enough protein, and really understanding our nutrition needs and all the things that come into gut health and IBS. Like I feel like I get the same question all the time about fiber, gut health, IBS, and I think it'd be really awesome to have a little group or I mean, we'll see how big it gets, but I would love to have a group where you really know that you can come here and I will answer your questions because I can't get through all DMs. I can't get through all comments. I try my best. I do a little too much, but yeah. I really want to help everyone. So that's my plan. And I'm also thinking about doing a getaway for it. So I'm going to, I've already reached out to a couple brands, but brands that have different fiber supplements or just nutrition products that I like and doing a little giveaway for the first hundred people that sign up, they'll be put into a giveaway. And yeah, let me know what you think of that. And I'm really excited. And okay, I need to drive back to Chicago now. I love being at my parents. It's so nice. I just didn't want to leave, but I also love Chicago. So I should probably go home because I have to drive. Okay, have a good rest of your week and like, share, subscribe, and engage. Love ya.